novels uh, and my child in turn, we're going to be looking at two different pieces of scripture tonight. Uh, I was going to originally preach on end times, but God changed my sermon, and uh, so here we are. Uh, we're going to first start off at Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 23. Now, we kind of touched a little bit on some of this this morning in Brother Ronnie's ser sermon, so we're going to go a little more in depth with that, and uh, of course, with both of these, I invite somebody, if they would, to read when they get there. It's my way of, you know, a lot of people wonder why I do that. It's my way of getting people involved with the service and everything. You know, I really can't really see too much to see if anyone out there is sleeping or anything like that. So it's my way of seeing if y'all are out there. <laughs> All right, but if someone would kindly read Galatians 5, 19 through 23, and then we'll read the other body of scripture and we'll have the opening prayer and we'll get into the message. Now the words of the flesh are manifest, which are, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, and lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedation, and heresy. Through what? What did you say? 19 through what? 323. 323. Envying, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Amen. Amen. All right. Now the next body of scripture we're going to look up is in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And you put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have it done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, when you take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the heaven of salvation and the word of the Spirit, and which is the word of God, praying always all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, and I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, which I am an ambassador in mind, but there too, but but therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. How she is my, a, a beloved brother and a faithful minister in the Lord to make known unto to you all these things, whom I have sent unto you same purposes that you might know our affairs and that you might comfort our hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith in God and the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so very much. Uh, Brother Orbury, if you would please lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity tonight to be in your house. Father, I just pray that you would be with this congregation. I pray that you'd be with Wesley tonight, Lord, as he brings us a message. I pray, Lord, that it, that it be in our ears, Father, to...
hear the message that he brings to us and let it let us be able to take this message out to the world when we leave here to the, to the lost and dying father just be with us as we go through the evening and watch over us these things we ask in your name amen amen, amen. well tonight this sermon pretty much came to me uh with everything going on here lately like old chick-fil-a controversy and then just everything else going on in the world and Tonight, I just want to encourage y'all as Christians and as, you know, the members of this church and everything is to go out and share the gospel with people. We are running out of time to share the gospel with the lost and dying world. We are, this nation is going down the drain and it is time for us, the body in Christ, to start standing up for Jesus Christ and for what is right. We need to stop tolerating all the stuff that we've been tolerating for many years, such as abortion and gay marriage and all that kind of Amen. stuff. Amen. It's time to put a stop to that. It's time to take a stand. Amen, brother. It just really bothers me how there are just so many people who don't come to church, who don't pray, who don't read their Bibles and everything, but claim to be Christians. And there's even people who are gay who claim to be Christians. And let me tell you something. There is no such thing as a gay Christian. I don't Amen. care how you look at it. Amen. Amen. Gay marriage is, and homosexuality it is a sin and it always will be a sin. I don't care how you look at it. I mean, people say, oh, you're judging everything. Let me tell you something. We are not judging when we tell you it's wrong. The Bible is what's judging you. And we're all going to have our day of judgment one day. You'll either be at one of two judgments. There's the judgment seat of Christ, and there's the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment is where all those who never accepted Christ are going to be at and be judged. We talked about Revelation 20, and it talks about where everyone whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire. Sadly, these days, people don't want to hear the truth, and it's really sad because, I mean, people just want to hear every little thing. I mean, you can go into a crowd of people and believe any stupid doctrine you want to believe, <laughs> yeah. but mention Jesus, and you're just, you're a Bible-believing religious fanatic. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, you know, the secular humanist stuff, I mean, that's really deceiving America. I mean, they believe that there is no absolute right, no absolute wrong. I mean, they remove the Ten Commandments, and people are not being taught what's right and what's wrong. That's why the world has so many problems now, like with these shootings and everything else, because people have never heard, Thou shall not kill, and other commandments. My deal is, what part of thou shalt not do people not understand? Amen. You may not like the thought that things are morally and spiritually going from bad to worse in this world, and especially in this country. Our founding fathers would not be pleased with the way this country is now. Also, in the scripture, it talks about you know putting on the whole armor of God. We are supposed to do that as believers. Brother Ronnie, you know, a lot of y'all, you know, who are in the military know very well, you know, you got to have on all y'all's gear before y'all go out and fight the enemy, or y'all are going to get hurt. Yeah. And it's the same way in our fight against the devil. I mean, we're not fighting literal people like, you know, human beings. We're fighting a spiritual battle. That's what it is. Yeah. All the world's problems boil down to God and Satan battling over the souls of mankind. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the battle has been ever since the beginning of time. A lot of people like to blame other things on all the world's problems, but that's the truth of what's going on. It's God and Satan battling over the souls of mankind. They have been doing that since the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, when the serpent tempted Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. They did, and they were driven out of paradise and forever cursed. And those curses that God put on them exist to this very day. Yeah. A recent poll showed, according to John Hagee, he talked about this in one of the sermons I listened to. It kind of, this one of the ways that God laid this sermon on my heart. Apparently, there's supposed to be 160 million Christians in America. Now, there were 160 million Christians in this country. Do you think that we'd be having all the problems that we have? Mm -hmm. No. 
thank you. If there were really 160 million Christians in America, the gay rights stuff would not be a problem. We would not have to have a constitutional amendment saying that marriage is between a man and a woman. We would not have to worry about abortion. We would not have to worry about the Ten Commandments being removed from public places. Amen. We would not have to worry about pornography and other horrible things that are on TV and the internet these days. And it would just be a whole different world. If everyone followed what the Bible said, this world would be a whole better place. Amen. Amen. It's just sad how people don't want to follow the Bible. I mean, but you know, people, you know, they hate the Bible because it puts bright lines in the sand about what is right and what is wrong. And people, when they come to church these days, they want to feel good without being good. They want the preacher to get up here and explain their sin. They, you know, they want to hear how to adjust to their sin. They don't want to hear the repent and confess your sins and be saved by the blood of Jesus. No, they don't want to hear that. No, they just want counseling. That's all they really want. They just want to believe in stuff like Mother Earth and saving the planet and all this stuff. Let me tell you something. This world's going to eventually go up in flames. Amen. I mean, it's, you know, I just don't understand a lot of people, you know, these politicians and everything, and it just, you know, and all these, you know, the candidates running for office and everything. I'm not really for any one of them, even Romney. You know, he's just the less of two evils, in my opinion, but, you know, <laughs> we just, you know, our leaders need to return to the Bible. We need to have Amen. good godly leaders. Right. If we Amen. have 160 right, million Christians in America, we wouldn't have people like Amen. that up there in Washington running our country, right. trying to take away all of our freedoms from us and turn this state, this country into a police state like other nations are. And the thing is, we're referred to places like Sodom and Gomorrah back in the Bible. And if we keep going down the road we're going to go on down, God is going to destroy us, and especially if we keep messing with Israel. Amen. I'm sure a lot of y'all saw yesterday that God pretty much poured out his wrath on Iran with that 6.9 right. earthquake. That's, right. That's God's way of talking to people. Throughout yeah. the Bible, yeah. God's used earthquakes right. to talk to folks. He used to talk to the children of Israel when they were complaining about Moses. God told Moses, like, get them in front of the tent or whatever it is where they usually have worship. And he's like, I want to talk to them. And he's open up the ground and swallow them up. Yep. Amen. Amen. He did it. So when you disobey God, you will pay. Amen. Yep. There's Amen. only two choices in life. You'll either do God's will or man's will. It wasn't God's will for all this bad stuff to happen in the world. It was man's will. Yep. You know, in the word it says, you know, that God's will is for everyone to repent of their sins and to come to know him. Yep. Amen. He didn't want all this bad stuff to happen. But unfortunately, man, you know, wants to do their own thing. For years, mankind's been saying, you know, just leave us alone. You know, mankind will do things better. Well, eventually, you know, after the rapture of the church, the tribulation's going to be mankind getting what they've always wanted, a world without God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that will happen very soon, I guarantee you. We are really close to going home. When the trump of God will sound, and we, which are alive and remain, will go up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air after the dead in Christ rise. Amen. I'm really looking forward to that day. I don't know about y'all, but I know I am. So I'm getting pretty fed up with this world. Amen. But until then, we have got to keep going out here, sharing the word with people, no matter if we offend them. We don't need to compromise our beliefs with anybody. Amen. Yeah. Never compromise. You know, there's times throughout the Bible, like that one time, you know, with the person selling the idols to pagans and everything, making a fortune. And, you know, the other guy who was with them, I forget the story, but, you know, just told me, you know, don't do that. <clears throat> you just don't compromise. You can't live both ways. Like the Bible says, you know, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, you know, he talks about Matthew, no man can serve two masters. You'll either love one and despise the other. That's 